transit agencies uh, across the world. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is how we've gathered sort of customer insight and data to build business cases and to subsequently grow our company. It's a little different to some of the other presentations insofar as some of the data that we've been collecting isn't just from analytics but is from sort of social behavior and, and, and beyond really. So a little bit of uh, flash history. We started uh, writing mobile apps back in 2002 when phones looked like that. Uh, that was off the back of the promise that this was very imminently going to become a huge channel. Uh, of course, that didn't really materialize for quite a number of years, which meant for uh, the first few years we were really quite basically poor, I guess. <laughs> but it did give us a lot of time to, to think about uh, the sort of reach that mobile apps could deliver once the market was ready. And it was an opportunity really to think about doing something really exciting, something really interesting that could touch the lives of so many different uh, people in one go through one medium. So how do we leverage that kind of volume? So what kind of insight, what kind of goals did we set ourselves at that time? So I guess there's no real answer to, to how you leverage large volumes in a commercially viable way, but we set ourselves a few rules, a few ideas. We thought that the apps had to be really compelling, and in order to be really compelling, they had to be free and available for everyone. We thought that in order to leverage the scale to its maximum, we would have to uh, have a model that was transactional to generate the recurring revenue. And we wanted to focus on those environments where mobile could become the ubiquitous way of doing things. So how do we make it happen? So our ethos has been really to focus on trying to solve real world problems trying to build business cases around solving pain points that people go through every single day. Sort of trying to focus more on what people need rather than what they want. So we started focusing on the transit agency because of the very large... I've disappeared. You focus on the transit agency. So I focus on the, we focus on the transit agencies because, uh, transit industry, because the volumes were so large and because the customer experience is really quite clunky and basically is ripe for innovation. So the first thing we looked at was the airline industry, which was the first mover to move to sort of digital ticketing. And uh, that completely disrupted sort of travel, travel agencies, etc. And everybody started buying their tickets uh, online. And I guess it's interesting because with airline, people have quite a big financial commitment when they buy a ticket. Uh, they're sort of planning things in advance with their friends or family at destination. That takes some time. Plus, the tickets are yield managed, which means the, uh, the further in advance you buy the ticket, the cheaper it's going to be. So the likelihood really is that users are going to be, or you know, prospective ticket buyers are going to be buying these tickets at home, sat at their table on a website way before they're going to travel. So we looked at other areas of transit where uh, mobile could be more effective. And that's when we started to investigate the data around railway and bus. Railway was particularly interesting because everyone was buying tickets at the station. This wasn't for any kind of lack of websites or ability to buy tickets in advance. That's just what people were doing. They were just rocking up at the stations and buying tickets. They were craving for a last minute experience. Perhaps it's because it's a smaller financial commitment. They're going somewhere for the weekend. They're seeing their folks, uh, uh, you know, whatever. It's a much simpler kind of uh, experience that they're after. So in the UK, we saw that 70% of tickets were bought at the station. But this experience is quite a painful one in practice. So for those of you that have uh, lived in the UK, in London, or in any large city for that matter, uh, you'll see that congestion and sort of ticket queues are really, really painful. And that's only really going to get worse uh, off the back of urbanization, population growth. Uh, we're only going to see more and more people rocking up at stations trying to buy tickets. And the government's very keen to make sure that congestion in the stations is limited. 
uh, and mitigate it as much as possible. And the transit agencies obviously need to bear the cost of all those ticket vending machines uh, and all that equipment, maintenance and overhead associated with cash handling, etc. So we gathered a lot of data and looked at how this market was working and there was quite a big pain point here, not just for the consumer that wanted something last minute on the go and instead had to queue up in this horrible experience, but also for the operator that was spending a lot of money in trying to sell these tickets and giving up a lot of valuable retail space uh, such as this image shows in, in Gatwick Airport, which could be filled with shops or, or a pub, which is going to generate revenue for the operator and is going to be a much more exciting user experience, I think, than queuing up. So with that insight from the uh, user, uh, from the passenger kind of data that we gathered, and the insight from the operator's kind of commercial drivers, we came up with the idea of transforming the phone into the ticket vending machine and transforming the phone into the ticket itself. That way we could deliver some that last minute uh, on the go user experience that the passengers are looking for and that marries itself so well with mobile and at the same time drive down the costs uh, for the agencies that are trying to sell these tickets. So that way we saw not only the adoption from the user's case, but also an industry that's willing to back this uh, new technology. So that means no ticket queues, uh, no more need to scale your ticket vending machines uh, as previously planned. If you have a new channel you can sell tickets through, it doesn't cost you anything as an operator because you're branding, you as a consumer are branding your own ticket vending machine. Now in this picture alone we can see about a quarter of a million dollars worth of ticket vending machine. And if we think that that can service about four to five people at once, how much does it cost to service a hundred people that have got mobile phones? Nothing. So the, the drivers there are really obvious, and the operator can replace these ticket vending machines with any other retailing activity that would actually generate direct revenue for them. So we did a lot of research around the technology of ticket vending machines and, and, and what we were working with to, to understand what the price points were to enable us to come up with a commercial model that would allow us to leverage the huge volumes that mobile brings. And cash handling is, turns out to be an extremely expensive uh, affair and a lot of transit agencies such as Transport for London are actually getting rid of, uh, of cash altogether, replacing it with contactless EMV or Oyster Card or other technologies. So mobile is an ideal uh, kind of channel for us to, to look at to exploit that volume because you are ticking all the boxes for the operator as well as the uh, mm -hmm. passenger. So that was kind of what we built our initial business case off of. But uh, I guess gathering insight, uh, executing on it, growing off the back of that is a continuous process that we are going through as a business. And is something that you have to go through continuously if you want to continue to grow and fulfill your business model. So once that business model is in place, there are still more things to learn, there's still more data to gather, and there's still more things to action off the back of that. So we developed uh, our own analytics package that leverages some of the existing tools, Google Analytics and a lot of other things out there, and aggregates them together to display something which really gives us a lot of information about passenger transit. How are they using those tickets? How are they traveling? When are they traveling? When are they buying? How can we start uh, designing our new features or our new updates to really maximize the user experience? So there's a lot of work that's gone into that. But perhaps the most, uh, the most interesting part has really been gathering the insight from the industry itself. So in the UK, for example, there's a highly fragmented rail market. There's a lot of private operators. And in order for mobile to be the ubiquitous way of buying tickets, we need to make sure that those tickets are accepted uh, and validated by all the operators in the market. So some operators might accept it and others might not because they need to be validated in a specific way. So in order to accelerate our growth, 
we kind of collected all the information, established relationships with the operators, and decided to develop another suite of mobile apps that conductors could use to validate those tickets. So the conductor would come along with their app and exploiting the onboard camera on the device, take a picture of the barcode or read the NFC tag and validate the ticket that way, again without the need for the operator to invest in further infrastructure to enable mobile ticketing. So it's again leveraging existing hardware, users bring their own hardware, conductors bring their own hardware, there's no additional investment, and that way we can accelerate the adoption of mobile ticketing. And what we learned from that was that adoption is growing, but not at the pace that we wanted to. So we started looking at a new model for our business. We started looking at other environments where there was only a single operator. So there wasn't this need for interoperation. So people could have a very simple proposition, mobile ticketing wherever you travel. You don't have to specifically go on one operator or another to, uh, to use it. And so we developed <coughs> our Just Ride product, which is not only applicable to uh, large transit areas, but also uh, can work across different modes of transit. So this is a product now we've launched in markets outside the UK. It's live in Boston, in San Diego. It also works in non-rail environments. We recently landed a contract with uh, Thames Clippers to do the, uh, uh, the boats on the Thames as well. So uh, sort of learning from that experience in the UK, has really allowed us to design a product that's much more flexible. So currently we have 18 agencies and clients across the world. We uh, currently service the, about 65% of the UK market by operator. We have uh, quite a few millions of downloads and lots and lots of requests per, per minute. Um, and uh, it's been really quite exciting journey from us. And as of yesterday, we are uh, very excited to announce that we landed a contract to do mobile ticketing for uh, the Metropolitan Transit Authority in New York. So uh, that's a really exciting uh, turn point for us. So yeah, that's kind of uh, Masabi's journey and uh, how we've uh, used the insight of uh, sort of how an industry works and how passenger behavior is. Uh, to leverage the scale that uh, mobile ticketing can deliver. Thank you. Yeah, really quick. So now I have questions.